Hi everyone, today I'm going to be having a look at colouring these two flowers. We're actually only going to do one of them, but I these are from Johanna Bassett's Secret Garden and I often find them a little bit tricky to know how to colour. This is actually from her um, calendar, but um, 2018 calendar, only two years late. But um, I, uh, I'm going to show you how I would colour this nice one um, and then it might give you a few ideas because I find there is one way that I see people colouring it, which is to make it look like a, sorry, look like a dandelion um, with white. And so they do a background, then they do white paint over it, and that's really pretty. But if you're not up to doing a background or you don't have a dark coloured background, that white doesn't stand out. So I thought we could have an experiment and try something a little bit different. So I'm going to start with doing this is a tiny pencil with no number. This is, I think, the light purple pink from the polychromos. I'm just going to find my new one, which is here. Yeah, oh, sorry, it's the light magenta number 119. So that's the one I'm going to use first. And I'm going to use it to make a sort of background for the flower. So we're going to go in between all these spaces. I'm not pressing very hard, I do ha I'm do. i quite heavy handed though, but I just want a gentle background colour. We're going to add more to this later, so you don't need to worry too much about it. And um, I'm trying to follow the direction of the lines. Do you see these lines in between that the flowers are attached to? And that's because we're going to do some lines on top in later on in that direction, so it should all be it would all make sense and be directional together. Now I'm going to just halfway up the flower. You could take it all the way out. It's up to you how you think you want to do it. Um, have a look at when it's finished and think about how you might want to do it perhaps. Or if you're colouring along, then uh, you can always take the colour out further once you've finished, as long as you remember what colour you're using for this bit. Now obviously you might be using completely different colours to me. So um, just keep the pencil handy. I always keep my pencils out that I'm using so that I know what I've been using. Or note it down. Like some books, um, I like to have consistent colours through them, particularly with um, Johanna Basford's Ivy and the Inky Butterfly. When I did that one, I wanted certain bits always the same colour. And so um, I made sure I wrote down. I've got a little sketchbook which I use for sort of odd bits of swatching. I'm not very good at swatching. I just get on with colouring but and things like that. And I just wrote down all the colours that I'd used and then that reminded me so I knew that Ivy's dress was whatever colour it was so that next time I did one I could go and refer to it and make it the same. Right, there we go, that's that. Now these flower heads, I also want to be a pinky colour um, we've got the light magenta there. I'm not going to go in with the dark magenta because it's really quite dark. We don't sort of have a middly colour of magenta, but I'm going to use the middle purple pink, which is number, I can't see myself, 425, and do the petals. Now, they're very small, obviously, but I'm going to try and shade them a little bit. So I'm going to do them slightly darker towards the middle and less pressure and lighter towards the outside so I'll explain it properly sorry so more pressure towards the center and less out towards the edge and I'm going to do the center with quite a hard pressure so I'm going to keep it all the same color the whole flower you could do these centers different um, differently but I'm just keeping it all the same partly because it's simpler and partly because I think it looks quite effective now if this was a larger flower I would use several shades and I would get a lot of colour here so that it looked like there was some shadow, things like that. But these are just little parts of a larger flower so we don't need to worry too much. I'm going to go all the way around. Um, on a page like this we've got this other flower as well. I tend to um, do it so that the flowers that look alike um, are all the same colour. So. I would do this other one the set exactly the same. You don't have to do that, but in order to help me to remember what I'm doing, I would do this bit that we've done around here, this this lighter part, I would do that on every flower. And then this bit that I'm doing, I'd do on every flower as well. 
and then you've got that consistency going through. You don't forget. There's no risk that you're going to forget what you were doing. Um, if I'm in the middle of a colouring session, I have to stop. Then I'll leave that pencil out so that I remember which one it was that I was using. So I just have little ways of remembering. Of course, you could do them all different colours and then it wouldn't matter. But here we go. Now the centre, we'll talk about that while I'm colouring this, um, it could be that you do every one of these little circles that are in the centre in a different, in a, individually, so each looks like one seed and you could do a little bit of shine in the middle of each one. So you could colour the whole, you could colour the whole thing in one flat colour and then do a dot of white pen to, as a reflection to make them look like individual seeds or you could colour each one separately and try to do some shading on it to make it darker on the outside of the circle and lighter towards the middle which would be quite tricky with a print this small but that's another idea, you'd have to have a very sharp pencil for that but I'm going to do something different again and hopefully that will give you a few ideas on uh, what to do now what's funny is these little flowers here, when I first started colouring Johanna's books I always, always coloured them blue. Any little flower on a stem like this, when there's several coming out, I would always colour them blue. And I still find myself doing that at times and I have to try and remember that, you know, it's nice to have some variety. Right, now we're done with this, we're going to do the centre. Now we are going to go for the dark magenta for this one. This is 133. Sorry I had to turn it away so I can see it. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to make it look as if there's some shine and shadow and shape within this piece. So we're going to have a harder pressure and more layers of colour around this outside and you can see I'm not separating out the seeds, I'm colouring them like as one. So I'm trying to get down quite a nice hard layer of colour here. And then I'm going to lighten it as we go up. So with each ring of seeds we'll do slightly less um, layers of colour. Now you can take your time with this. You can start off with a soft layer across the whole thing like this. And then slowly darken it up. So miss out that and go out and then wider circles, you can do it in whichever order you like. So the reason I've, I quickly scribbled over all of it is because I do want some colour on every part, but I want it to be less towards the middle. And I want that to slowly fade upwards. And hopefully that will give the impression that there's some light shining in the middle and reflecting off the centre of the flower. Now when you've done this you could still do little white dots on every seed to make it look like they're reflecting light um, if you want to sort of pretty it up. So you can see I'm just gradually layering it up until I get the effect that I'm looking for. Which I think I'm happy with now. Now the last bit is to do these, um, th what I said, I'm going to do some lines. Now I'm going to stick with this colour and I'm just going to sharpen it because I need it to be really sharp. Now I'm going to get a ruler. I'm going to show you. So I'm going to go in my drawer rustle around in my drawer. It's just a little, just a normal small ruler and I'm going to firstly follow this line which is already drawn in and then I'm going to do some ones in between. Now there are small lines drawn on here so we can follow those a little bit. We need to slowly angle the ruler round to fill in this gap between the flower and there we go, that's the first section. And that's why I've only taken the colour up to here, because my lines are only going to go up to here. But you could take them beyond, it's, you know, it's all up to you to 
adapt it to what you want and I'm just drawing them through there we go and I'm going to go all the way around doing the same thing hopefully it won't be too dull for you now this page in Secret Garden that this is from is my absolute favourite Johanna Basford page ever I have to say I just absolutely love it and I've got two copies of the book and I've done the pages on both I've got her postcards and I've done page both of those and this one is from the calendar so I'm just doing this one now but I'm not quite so keen on this one because um, it's, it's quite a small piece of the page rather than you know the, and my favorite flower on the page is actually this one there so I'm uh, sorry I've moved it um, so there are there isn't many on this page like that there's only that one and it's not a whole one so um, that's why I'm not quite so enthused about this one but but funnily enough, it's a page that I don't do immediately. Like when I got my book, I was like, oh, love that page. The first book, the first book, you know, when I first got the book. And yet I, it took me ages to actually get around to doing it because it's such a precious, pretty page. I had to make sure I really did it justice. And the same happened when I got my second copy of the book. And actually I've only quite recently done the page in it. Even though I kept looking and looking and looking at it. So I'm doing the same thing, you can see all the way around with this flower. Now I'm getting quite excited too because Johanna's got a new book coming out in April. Um, I'm not, some people are saying March the 30th, some people are saying April the 1st. It might be slightly different days, April Fool's Day seems like quite a good day. <laughs> It, uh, it would seem to suit Johanna's fantastic sense of humour. Anyway, we'll find out exactly when it is. I've already um, pre-ordered it and uh, I can't wait. And the pictures I've seen from that are so lovely. I suspect I might get a new favourite. Although it's going to be hard to beat this one, which is from the first book. Think how many books she's brought out since. And I'm still liking this one the best. But uh, we'll see. I, there are no pictures of hers I dislike so you know I know I will like them all there we go we're nearly done now so there we go that's that done now then we've got the leaves to do and I'm not going to do the leaves today I'm just going to leave that flower because I think that's quite enough to have done for you and hopefully it's given you some ideas on that on what to do when you do that page so i hope you enjoyed the video and thank you so much for watching and happy coloring